Here's a nice camera. Retina 3C, big C. Looks tidy enough. It's got problems. We remove the lens so you can see. I've got the shutter set on B. Look at the state of that diaphragm. Now what's happened here? Well, in this case, the owner was using some solvent, probably naphtha, on a cotton bud and he was cleaning the diaphragm blades in order to remove some traces of oil. And look at what he's done to the blades. Now what's happened there? Well, what I expect has happened is that he has put some solvent onto those blades and the fluid has effectively glued those blades together. Then he has very likely moved the aperture setting lever at the bottom of the shutter in order to open and close those blades, but they don't want to move because they're stuck by the fluid that you've just has just been put on them. So what happens? Well, you can force them in one direction, but when you go to put them back the other way, the blades just pop out of place. This type of shutter is particularly vulnerable to that sort of thing because the diaphragm blades, unlike those on earlier Compour shutters that had a rivet forming a pivot at each end of the blade, on this style of shutter, the two pivots are very close together at one end of the blade. So the blade is, not, is being pushed and pulled from one end and the flat broad surface of the blade is able to stick to its neighbours and doesn't want to move and then all things go bad. So I'm going to pull the shutter apart, service the shutter, put the, app, the diaphragm back together where it was and hopefully I will demonstrate to you exactly how this fault can be caused simply by putting some, or, well in this case, solvent on those blades and then moving the lever. Um, it's very easily done and as you can see it's a bit of a disaster. Very likely there was not much wrong at all with that diaphragm prior to the person fixing it. But there we go. More later. Looking in from the back here I can see that there is um, speckles over the inside surface of that rear lens group. And if I can get it loose, we'll have a quick look. That's it. I'll see if I can hold that to the light so you can see those, those marks. I'll zoom you in. It's tricky to see anything on a concave surface like that, but I tell you now that there is looks like tiny splashes on that lens, and doubtless that's from the solvent that had been applied. I'll put that to one side. I've got to strip this shutter down. I'll bring you back once it's in pieces and we're down to the diaphragm. So here I have the shutter split. I've got the mechanism plate out of the uh, case. And you can see here quite clearly that these diaphragm blades have been displaced. The pin has pulled out of the socket here and here and presumably over here and here as well. So hopefully those rivets that form the pivots on those blades haven't been damaged. And once I disassemble that and clean it, I should be able to hopefully reassemble that and it should be good to go. You can see quite a bit of sort of hazy staining on here. Now that's typical when something has been flood cleaned or when people have been dabbing at it with solvent or naphtha on a cotton bud. It's not sufficient. It won't it's not a good way to fix a shutter. A shutter needs to be disassembled and cleaned properly. 
all you tend to do when you dab it blades with solvent on a cotton bud is shift the oil from one spot to another. Here we have the mechanism plate and the blades. You can see the blades are quite badly marked there. They're quite stained. Now, some of that is oil and some of that will probably clean away. Now that's where the blades have been overlapped each other and uh, that certainly is likely to cause problems if that was being left like that. The mechanism plate itself, you can see here quite clearly these shiny spots. Those shiny spots are oil. That tells me that the mechanism plate was oily. You can see the oil here and here. Now that would have been trapped underneath the um, retard gear train on this point and the self timer at that point. So both of those gear trains have held oils trapped under there and it's very likely that that oil was either there previously or it's been flushed there as the blades have been cleaned. So this certainly needs to be disassembled and cleaned correctly. There should be no oil on the mechanism plate. So, tip those blades out the way. Let's have a quick look at this. So there are three screws hold the retainer in place. The screws are not loose, that's good. Let's tip out this diaphragm. I'll have a quick look at these blades to see what sort of a state they're in to make sure they have both of their pivots and that they're not too distorted. There's a little bit of distortion on these blades. Uh, I can see it here. There's like a, it's pulled down at this point on the rivet. Um, the retainer plate here is, is quite clean. It certainly needs to be cleaned better than that. You can see that, uh, that hazy finish to it. That's a deposit. That's what's been left over after solvents have been applied. The case likewise needs to be cleaned. Um, that'll have similar stuff on it. And here you can see this is our moving section. This is the uh, piece that as it's turned backwards and forwards swings the blades inwards and outwards and you can see there's quite a bit of uh, dirt and so forth on that surface that should all be clean as well. So these components just need to be cleaned correctly and then hopefully reassembled and I'm hopeful that um, that's all that will be required. You can see here by the state of this cotton bud that there's quite a bit of dirt and oil coming off these diaphragm blades. These should all be nice and clean. But you can see that there's a fair bit of dirt coming off on that. And I can tell as I clean them that there are oil on the blades because the blades tend to have a shiny look to them when they have oil on them and as you strip the oil off with the solvent the blades take on a, uh, a duller finish more a charcoal grey than black The amount of oil that's on these blades, I would not have expected there to be a problem with them in the camera. I think it's much more likely that they showed some obvious marks and that the owner decided it would be a good idea to remove those marks, but I don't think that the oil that was on the blades would have been sufficient to cause a problem. It certainly can cause problems. Um, the oil on the diaphragm blades in particular can stick the blades together and cause exactly this sort of fault 
that we saw in this case that had been caused by solvent. I'll bring my jig over and reassemble this diaphragm. Alright, well, we'll start by putting the uh, plate on there, the retainer plate. And I'll start placing the blades. If the blades are badly distorted, it's very hard to lay the blades in place because they don't want to lay flat. Usually you discover it about the fourth or fifth blade that you're going to have a problem. These ones so far look relatively good. So I have to pull back the earlier blades that I put on there. Whoopsie, that was a mistake. Just managed to bump that and shift things out of place. Let me get things back where they were. Get the fifth blade in position. Lift the first two blades back over the top so that everything's lying correctly in place. Now I've got to fit the other plate in place. And since I'm doing this back to front, I've got to uh, make sure I get this correctly positioned. That's it. And then the case goes on over the top and I'm just checking that that's clear and I haven't trapped any bits of cotton in there or anything. That looks good. Lower this into position. There's a pin that locates it. It only goes in one position. Why can't I find it? Yeah, that plate's just moved. That's better. And for some reason that's not falling into place. Let me check what's going on here. That looks correct. Try again. This time. So I'm going to flip that upside down fit my three screws that hold the retainer plate in place and I'll just get that done up very lightly at first. If one of the blades is displaced, if I'd managed to knock one out of position while I was putting the plate down, I don't want to do the screws up tight and potentially damage a blade by doing so. So I'm being careful not to do the screws up tight just running them home. Once they're in position I can check the check the look of the diaphragm first and I can see immediately that the five pivot pins are correctly located in the plate on this side and if I move this ring we can see that the diaphragm blades all swing in smoothly and correctly. So now I can go back and tighten those three screws up. And check again to make sure that everything is still good and it is. 
that action is nice and smooth. I don't need to do anything to that. Occasionally, particularly if the blades are distorted, you'll find that you have a, a degree of friction in this action and it'll be because the blades are distorted and they don't want to slide over each other as easily as they might. Um, in that case, a little puff of graphite powder and work it backwards and forwards repeatedly and then very carefully blowing out all the loose graphite powder often will make a uh, quite a stiff diaphragm work very smoothly indeed. But I have to stress that is only for a freshly cleaned and assembled diaphragm. If you there's any traces of oil on there because you didn't disassemble the diaphragm and clean it, then graphite would certainly not be the thing to do. All you'll end up with is a bigger, stickier mess. So there we go, that part's gone smoothly and um, since that was our major fault, the rest of the shutter should go very smoothly indeed, I would hope. So now I've got to look at this um, mechanism plate and I'm not expecting any surprises with this. It's a little bit oily, about not at all uncommon. A lot of them that I see would be worse than this. But it certainly needs to be cleaned. All traces of oil removed. And there we can see this plate, the oil there is really where it's been trapped underneath the retard gear train and delay action. And a little bit on the other side of the plate. But otherwise that's not too bad either. So I'll clean that up. I'll clean up the five shutter blades and then reassemble the shutter. As you can see, I have the mechanism plate all clean now. And you'll notice that none of that white powdery deposit looking stuff is visible on that plate. It's all just nice and clean as it should be. The shutter blades now are all nice and clean too. They didn't require any uh, treatment with Brasso. They are more than adequate in the condition they are at the moment now that they've been carefully cleaned with some naphtha on a cotton bud. So I'm just going to reassemble the rest of the shutter. Um, no reason to expect anything exciting in that process so I will probably bring you back when the shutter is complete and then I hope to bring in another shutter and show you how to bugger up the aperture in the way I believe this one had been done. Alright well I've got my shutter all complete now back together working well you can see that the uh, diaphragm Opens and closes normally now. No problem there, no stiffness. And uh, everything nice and smooth. So that part of the job is over for this camera. But I want to um, show you how easily you can cause that problem in a shutter if you're trying to clean the diaphragm blades. Here I've got the diaphragm mechanism from a synchro comp or shutter just like the uh, one in that 3C Retina 3C shutter I showed earlier and this one as you can see this is just stripped down to the basics so you can see what's happening is very very oily the uh, blades are very stiff to move um, you might even see that they flex slightly as I move them that's because the blades are pretty much glued together with that oil. So just for entertainment value, I'll see if I can clean those blades a little bit with solvent on a cotton bud. See if we can actually make a uh, serious dent on that oil that's on there. Lots of oil coming off there.
here I've actually got better access than you would have working through a complete shutter because uh, I can see the surrounding part here too normally you'd only see the centre, the centre part so I've spent about five minutes so far and the blades are by no means good they're still very very oily and at this stage it would have been much quicker for me to strip this down entirely to clean that thoroughly so I'll carry on and see if I can get these blades clean of oil using this method which I don't recommend and um, report back well, 10 minutes later, I've got those blades cleaned to a state that looks fairly reasonable. Um, they're certainly moving a lot freer. There's still some marks on there. Nothing too awful, fortunately. Now, I will show you how to go about breaking the diaphragm while you're cleaning it. Typically, what happens is that while you are busy cleaning in a circular motion with your cotton bud you press slightly too hard on the blade and it wasn't the blade that I was pressing on that got displaced it was the one that was behind it and you can probably see that the blade is there pressed out of place now that one just dropped back into place. Ah, but the blade next to it, you can see has popped out completely. And the end of that blade, instead of being tucked down inside, is now riding on the outside. If at this stage I move this lever further across, things will start to get really um, messed up. If you are at this stage, with that loose blade you could recover from that if you saw it if you failed to force anything you can very probably get in with the tip of a toothpick and tuck that blade back down there it's tucked back in that diaphragm's good again but all you needed to do to create the problem and this typically happens at about this point is press on one of the blades and it'll just pop one of them out of place that one I just felt one go it wasn't the blade I was pressing on it was the one that was behind it that's been displaced and again if you look in there you can see this blade is bowed up and this blade is completely out of position yeah I've managed to clip that back into place and that diaphragm is working correctly now that shutter that I just dealt with that had probably been damaged in exactly the same way except instead of stopping when the fault had been caused and obviously there would have been quite some resistance on this arm at that point that arm was pushed and it caused those blades to pop completely out of place so I will actually strip this diaphragm down and clean it properly I want to see if there's a, any apparent difference between the blades 
cleaned as well as I can reasonably get them cleaned using this dodgy method or by doing it properly. I'm cleaning these blades after I've removed them you can probably see the oil staining at this end of the blade well, of course that was underneath the plate and we couldn't see that to clean it and similarly on the other side likewise these two plates the moving plate and the retainer plate were both quite marked and uh, retaining a haze of oil on the inside as well so they certainly didn't clean up well using the cotton bud method um, working from the front of the shutter you would be hard pressed to get the diaphragm free from oil and of course in this case I was working from both sides of the diaphragm when I was cleaning it earlier if you're only poking at it from the front your chances of getting it all clean are somewhat reduced again anyway I'll reassemble this and we'll see what it looks like here's the diaphragm reassembled after proper cleaning now the action is much much smoother um, that's not going to show up on camera but I can tell you that that moves very freely indeed compared with how it was moving earlier I wouldn't say that there was any obvious difference in the appearance of the blades they're probably slightly cleaner looking than they were before I disassembled it but um, it would be hard to pick that there's still some obvious staining on that blade there and that didn't come away from the cleaning so that's probably long standing that would probably only remove with metal polish and I try and avoid polishing diaphragm blades because of the rivets on them they're easy to catch on the cleaning cloth and, um, and it's a disaster really if you manage to damage the blade if you tear a rivet off it's certainly a disaster but even if you just distort the blade it means that it won't work smoothly like this so there you have it that's what a um, that's how you damage the diaphragm when you're cleaning them this of course is the front of the shutter on this side and all that's re required in order to damage it is to press on one of the blades and typically it's not the blade you pressed on that caused the problem it was one of the blades behind it and I'll just pop those back into place we're good to go if you stopped when you press those blades out of position and pop them back into place of course you'd need the rear group off you'd have no problem but typically people don't um, they move the lever the blades pop completely out of place and before you know it the diaphragm looked like the uh, diaphragm and the shutter are repaired so thanks for watching